All right, let's get started. Hello and welcome to our webinar on FuelPoint Integrated Payments Solution. My name is Hisham. I am with FuelPoint and I will be hosting this webinar. We're here today to talk about how we can help you use the FuelPoint payments to streamline your business process and optimize your entire service management experience to enable you to provide a greater customer experience and unlock the productivity your company needs in order to grow. Throughout this webinar, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them using the Q&A feature and our moderators will respond to you. I am first going to start off with a little bit about FuelPoint. We are a leading provider of end-to-end -end service management and we are unique because we manage the full spectrum of service lifecycle, including customer, mobile, workforce management, asset and warranty management, with integrations to your favorite CRM, ERP and accounting systems, as well as payment processing. We've been experts in field service management for over 20 years. We have hundreds of customers spanning across North America in a variety of different industries, including HVAC, refrigeration, fire and life safety, petroleum, IT services, telecom, medical devices, building management, and many more. We help our customers focus on a positive business outcome, and therefore we have one of the highest customer retention rates in the industry. Our objective is to be at the forefront of the digitization of the service economy and to empower our customers to grow and better serve their customers and their respective industries. We've been empowering our customers to process payments for some time now. Initially, we offered an integration to allow our U.S. customers to process payments directly from FuelPoint. We've now teamed up with Stripe to build a seamless integrated payment solution that works for bo both U.S. and Canadian customers. This allows you to offer your customers a hassle-free way to pay with ACH, credit cards, or e-checks. In turn, you'll reduce the administrative overhead and increase turnaround time. We are a fully PCI compliant collection process, which means ensuring the security of data collected and dollars exchanged will not be a burden on your business. It is projected that digital invoicing will grow at a compounded annual rate of 20% until 2027. Fast transaction processing, free and easy setup, and no long-term contracts or monthly fees means you could get started today and join the digital invoicing movement. Fuel point payments are also ERP friendly and will communicate payment status and updates to your ERP system. I'd like to take a break from the PowerPoint for now and invite you into one of our fuel point sandboxes and demo to you in real time how the seamless payment solution works. All right, here we are inside the FuelPoint sandbox. We're going to get logged in here in just a moment, but before we do so, here are some benefits that I'd like for you to consider. Consider how long it takes for you to get an invoice in front of your customer right now. How long does it take for your customer to see and pay that invoice? How long does it take for the payment to make its way to your bank account? What about situations where your technicians in the field are having to collect payment? In a cash on delivery type situation, for example. The FuelPoint payment solution is an elegant way to address all these situations here. You can get an invoice in front of your customer immediately. You can process the payment immediately and the money will make its way to your bank account immediately. In the field, you could potentially circumvent the need for a payment processing terminal by simply sending the customer a payment link from the mobile application um, in the field. 
and having the customer open up the pay link and completing the payment or the transaction on their device, whether it's a phone, tablet, on the computer, you're kind of bypassing the need for a terminal in some situations. There may be situations where a terminal is still useful, but just something to consider. All right, now that we're logged into FuelPoint, we're looking at a list of all of our work orders. In your world, whether you're using FuelPoint or something else, a work order could be called something like a service ticket or a service request or a field ticket, uh, something along the lines. It's basically um, the way that your customer requests for service from you. And so we're going to go ahead and create a new work order. Now that we have the work order form opened, we're going to fill out the essential fields in order to complete this example. So here we have a customer, we have an address. Uh, we'll go ahead and give it a description here. Right. work order type over here we will add our severity over here and our billing over here we'll do some TNM billing in this example all right if you're using field point you may be familiar with a lot of the aspects of creating a work order of course, your form or your system could look a little bit different. We have a wide range of different tabs and modules and fields that we can configure and customize to suit your business. So uh, this is probably a little bit more than what uh, you can see in your system today, but that's totally okay. Now that our work order is saved, uh, we have a work order number up here. Notice that the work order is in entered status. And we now have access to these workflow actions that will allow us to advance this work order through the different steps that are required to eventually be able to invoice this work order and collect payment. So I think in this example, we'll go ahead and add some parts. So we'll go ahead and click on the plus sign here. On this form, we can choose a part or an item from the available list of parts. We'll go ahead and choose this cable here. All right, we get to specify a quantity, a unit cost, as well as a unit price. Of course, if we had an ERP integration, we could do a live inventory lookup potentially to see how many units on hand we have. Uh, we could pull in the price and the cost from the ERP system. And if we don't have enough uh, on hand quantity, we can create a purchase order or a requisition to backfill the stock so that we have sufficient uh, stock. We'll go ahead and hit save and close on the part here. And this will take us back to the main work order form. You'll notice here that our table for the parts has updated with the part number that we selected and it reflects the price, cost and quantity. Next, we can go ahead and schedule this work order by creating an appointment to let our technician know that there is some service that needs to be done. Um, to do that, we could probably use the schedule workflow action. There are other ways to achieve this task as well. So we'll go ahead and click on schedule. 
we can go ahead and fill in the date and the time for the appointment and then hit save under our appointments tab we can see a list of all the different appointments that have been created for all the technicians in the fuel point world if you're not familiar with this an appointment is how we log the amount of travel the amount of labor so that it could later later be billed to your customer so in this case uh, we've created an appointment for this technician typically if your technician is using the mobile application the fuel point mobile pro they'll be able to pick up this uh, work order and this appointment on mobile and complete it there uh, they also of course have the ability to add the parts and the expenses from the mobile application for the purposes of this demo, we're kind of assuming the role of the technician here. And so we'll go ahead and complete the appointment using the portal. So at the top here, we have some workflow actions that we need to advance through in order to complete this appointment. If you're not familiar with these actions, uh, it's possible that your environment may have been customized to exclude these actions. But they have uh, a few different functions. One of them is calculating the travel time and labor time automatically based on the date time difference of when you click each one of these activities. Another one is they could be used as a trigger to automate email notifications uh, potentially to your customer to let them know that they are on route or on site or maybe even internally to escalate uh, or just notify the team that, you know, something has happened, we're not able to make it, or hey, we're on, on the way, we're doing the work, or the work is completed. So we'll go ahead and click Edit here. We'll fill in some labor time and some travel time. And I'll go ahead and hit Save. Now that it has saved, we'll go ahead and click on complete the appointment. All right, we're now back to the main work order page. Maybe we can try adding an expense just so we have some variety uh, when we get to the invoice. Expense dates, we'll choose an item number. Perhaps this is a freight charge. Quantity one and the price is hundred dollars and this is a billable expense the customer will be paying for this we can hit save and close all right so at this point it's kind of fair to assume that the work is done we have completed the service ticket and again this is something that typically your technician will do from the field on their phone but it's possible that your process might be different okay so we can see the status of the work order it says completed so from here um, there's a few different actions you can take uh, one of them is to generate an invoice preview to get an idea of what the total will be once you generate the final invoice and to do that we're going to navigate to invoices and then we want to click on generate totals as you can see here is the total for this invoice down here you get the breakdown by uh, line type so the expense, the labor, the part, the travel are all here. And you have the ability to drill down into each line. So for example, if we need to adjust the labor amount, we can drill down here by clicking on the line and it would open up the appointments form for us. Whereas if we click on the parts line, it's smart enough to open up the parts form for us. So this is kind of uh, just a, a final check before you produce the invoice. If you're happy with the totals, everything looks uh, agreeable to you. We can go ahead and close an invoice. Um, 
if you're in the line of work where you don't typically invoice each work order independently, that's totally okay. You have the ability to generate invoice batches and kind of post them all at once. For now, we'll do close an invoice. All right, so you can see now that our work order has been invoiced. So typically at this point in time, someone from the finance team is, uh, is getting involved and uh, we want to send an email pay link to the customer so that they can pay us using their credit card. In order to do that, we can approach this a few different ways. One way is from the invoices tab here, you notice we have an invoice number with a hyperlink and we can drill down into the invoice directly. That's one way to do it. And then using the email button up here, we can email the invoice with a payment link uh, automatically from here. So here is the email invoice form. From here, you're able to add a list of recipients. You're able to modify the subject line and the body. In this case, there is a email template that's been pre-configured to automatically pull in the invoice number, uh, potentially the customer's name, and some other details that are dynamically generated uh, from the database. Now you have control over the language and the styling format of this email here. There is a menu entry that you can search for, which is called invoice email settings. And from there, you're able to set these template parameters here. So for now, we're going to send this email to, our, uh, to ourselves and um, we can pick up the pay link from there and continue. Once you hit save on the send action, you get this confirmation pop-up that says the email was sent successfully. You can click OK to make it disappear. And now we check our email inbox for the email. Okay, so here's the email that we received after uh, sending the automated link from FuelPoint. So you can see we got uh, a copy of the fuel point invoice report automatically attached to the email, which is nice. Um, there's the body of the message that was configured as part of that HTML template. And down here we have the pay invoice button. Um, and there's also a URL in case sometimes, you know, when emails go through spam filters and firewalls and things of the such, uh, sometimes buttons get stripped, so the URL is kind of a backup in case the the recipient's email um, modified the message. So we'll do uh, two things. We'll open up this uh, PDF report to show you what it looks like, and we'll also click on the pay invoice button right now and see what that uh, what that brings up for us. Right, so here we are with the PDF version of the fuel point invoice. It gives you the invoice number at the top, the date, the bill to, ship to details, and then if you recall earlier, we added an expense, we added some labor, some travel, and a part. And it's giving you those breakdowns on this invoice here, as well as your total at the bottom. Now, when we click on the pay link, this is what we'll see. So this is the form that you're um, transferred to when you click on the pay link. It gives you the total at the top, the invoice number, invoice date. Uh, it gives you the ability to add 
some additional emails that you want uh, a copy of the payment confirmation to be sent to. This is in addition to whatever is on file uh, as, as a fuel point billing contact. So you can kind of add additional emails here to receive a copy of the payment confirmation. The rest of the form is pretty standard. Um, everyone must have seen one version or one flavor of this form before. You're able to process uh, credit card details here or for an ACH, you're able to kind of use the bank information, try to find your bank, put in the, the details that way. So in this example, I think we'll do a, a card transaction. So we'll go ahead and fill out the card details. and we'll hit submit payment it gives you the transaction id the invoice number it says you paid and the total now when we pop back into fuel point we'll be able to see that a payment has been received so let's take a look so this was the invoice detail form which uh, from which we sent the initial email for payment. If I refresh this form now, I expect to see that a pay link was sent. That was the first action that we took. And that it's now fully paid since we've already processed the payment via the payment link. And it says that as well. So it's that easy. Um, if there is an ERP integration configured, for example, if you're using NetSuite or QuickBooks or Business Central uh, or Dynamics Great Plains, um, FuelPoint would then let those systems know that payment has been received. If you're an accounting person and you're not really interacting with the work orders very much or very often, um, you can navigate directly into the invoices grid. And from here, you're able to see the status of all the invoices that are available, who the customer is, what the amounts are. And if you want to, you can drill down and see a little bit more detail about the account. Another great feature to consider here is the payments transactions table. And so the payments transaction table shows you all the transactions that have occurred against this uh, particular invoice and the status of each transaction with the corresponding Stripe transaction ID. With respect to credit cards, it's probably pretty straightforward, just a one-to-one -one, uh, transaction to record relationship. However, when you're dealing with ACH, you know, you could be waiting for a while for the transaction to clear. And so you'll get updates in the payments transactions table here as to what the current status in the ACH process is. So it'll kind of give you an entry when it cleared what stages in the clearing process and then eventually when it finally got paid it will create an entry in this table to signify to you that the payment has been received. Now as far as the customer setup goes if we close out of here and you pull the customers So at the customer card or at the customer master level, there is this field that says send invoice via. And in order to be able to send a pay link the way that we did uh, just a little bit earlier, the email pay link must be selected. 
sometimes it says email where they just get kind of electronic PDF copies of the email or it may say mail or it's like physical mail in order to send the pay link the email pay link option must be chosen in some cases um, if the customer has already added a credit card on file previously we have this payment methods tab and it's basically a credit card vault. It allows you to keep the customer's credit card on file so that you can use it to process future payments. And the way you get the card number in the vault is by either kind of manually entering it in if the customer provides you the details in a secured way or alternatively, you can send them an email directly from Fieldpoint, inviting them to add their card details. And what they're going to receive is basically a form very similar to the one we used for payment, where it asks them for the card number, expiration, security code, and such. And so you'll have those details here. So here's an example that I prepared earlier for another customer. This is an example of the email that your customer would receive, inviting them to add their credit card to your credit card vault so that it could be used for future payments. So once you click on the link here, you'll be taken to the onboarding page where your customer can securely key in their credit card details. So here's the form. Your customer can then go ahead and key in their card details so that it could be added to your credit card vault. Click on add payment method. Get a confirmation that the payment method has been added now when you go back to field point and you check the customer record under the payment methods table you'll notice that there's now a card that we entered you can see the last four digits and you can now use that card in, in your credit card vault to process payments for future invoices so i previously prepared an example for this customer if I take a look under invoices, I should be able to see all the invoices for this customer. And I can just sort by the most recent one, open that one and make it full screen. You notice you have that pay button now at the invoice. And by the way, this is the same thing as going to the invoices grid and locating the invoice from there just a shortcut from the customer master. So we can go ahead and click on the pay button here. It already has the, the card on file right here. So you can just add any additional emails you might need. Uh, use the visa that's on file or use another payment method and then submit for payment. Same deal as before, you get a payment confirmation. When you go back to the fuel point payments, and so once the invoice has had a chance to be processed, you'll see an entry under the payments transaction for the same invoice over here. So we didn't demo what the field tech would have on their phone, but the process would be very similar, uh, assuming that your field technician has enough permission and privilege to invoice the work order from the field, then we can definitely introduce some steps or potentially even automate the, uh, the sending of that uh, invoice payment link
so that they can collect payment in the field from the customer. Now, if you're already uh, integrated with Stripe, um, you have the ability to view a Stripe dashboard either by logging into Stripe directly or by opening up the uh, integration or the onboarding screen and then opening up the Stripe dashboard. So if you click on the Stripe dashboard button here, it will launch Stripe for you directly from within FuelPoint. You'll be prompted to log in with your Stripe credentials and then this is the dashboard. As you can see, it's a very nice graphical representation of the transactions, the dollar amounts. When you're in the live version as opposed to a developer's version, there are some additional tabs that will show around payments and top customers by spend. You'll also have the ability to look at the processed payments in the payments table. So this is similar to what I showed you earlier on the fuel point side under the invoice where we had the payment transactions. It's kind of connecting with this table here to show you an audit trail of all the transactions that uh, have been processed, what status they are in for ACH payments, for example, and a little summary across the top of how many succeeded, how many were refunded, uncaptured, or failed. You can also look at balances, which will show you the current account balance, upcoming payouts to your bank, recent transactions that were completed, you can also take a look at customers, which will show you a list of your credit cards or your credit card vault. So you see which cards you have on file from the different customers that uh, have set up their credit cards on file with you. Just before we move away from this topic here, the onboarding is uh, super fast. You could probably get onboarded in, in 10 minutes or so. I have some screenshots that show you what the onboarding process looks like, um, but it's super fast, super easy, and you can kind of start the onboarding from within field point. You can just search for the Stripe onboarding page, which is the one that we're on right now. And you simply would need to specify a country code and then there's a button here that gets you started and then you just go through the steps and provide all the details that are requested and uh, by the end of it, if you've provided good information, Stripe would process the, uh, the application almost immediately. If there are some issues with it, kind of bad information or things did not match as Stripe would have expected it to, then there might be a little bit of delay um, while someone investigates. So the screen that we were looking at just a moment ago, the uh, Stripe onboarding screen. In my case, on my screen, the Stripe was enabled and there's kind of details filled in. And instead of start onboarding, my screen said uh, Stripe dashboard. If the configuration was not uh, previously configured, this is what the page would look like. You would uh, enable the Stripe integration. You click Start Onboarding, and then you would be taken through um, an onboarding wizard, so to speak. So it looks like this. You kind of are prompted to enter your email address and then it kind of takes you through the steps where it asks for incremental information, asks you to create a password. From here, it'll do an account verification for multi-factor. Then it secures the account. Now you begin to provide details about your company, you know, the country, the company, the address details here, the industry, website perhaps. 
personal details here for banking purposes as well. Um, the bank details here, account number. A little bit more information. Again, nothing really fancy going on here so far. It gives you a summary to kind of review just before you wrap up and submit the application. Of course, it's crucial that you have the banking information correct here. This is where money will be kind of deposited uh, to. So that's kind of the summary of the setup process. Very intuitive, very easy to follow. So now that you saw how easy it is to get set up, I'd like to remind you that again, there are no contracts, and no monthly fees, very competitive pricing. To learn more about our pricing, you could visit one of the two links on the screen here on our fuelpoint.net website. Depending on whether or not you're in Canada or the US, the pricing will look a little bit differently for you, but both very competitive nonetheless. Some upcoming features that are currently under development uh, in FieldPoint. We're obviously putting a, a huge effort into the Mobile Pro to give you more options around how you process payment in the field, to empower your technicians to collect payment and close the service tickets much quicker. We're working on integrating with the Stripe recurring payments and pre-authorized payments so that you're able to configure recurring uh, payments on contracts, for example, that are um, uh, preventative maintenance contracts where you're collecting a set amount of dollars every month, every half a year, every full year. You have some sort of a recurring cadence that you're following. So you'll be able to use one of the cards, uh, the credit cards in, in the credit card vault that you currently have on file as one of the um, payment methods and you'll be able to pre-authorize that card to automatically deduct a certain amount of course it has to be uh, authorized by the customer but once that's completed your payments will move into your bank account automatically on that set cadence card pre-authorization is a pretty cool feature this will basically allow you to pre-authorize a work order before a technician is dispatched. So for example, a customer calls in, they tell you what the problem is. You're like, you know, based on experience, you estimate it's gonna be a $500 service call. So you pre-authorize $500 on the customer's credit card just to make sure you're not going to have issues with payments later on. And then once the technician does get dispatched to the field and they complete that work, you can release the pre-authorization and process a full payment. And that way you're getting paid a lot quicker. I think this brings us to the end of our session today. If you've made it all the way here, well done. I think there were some questions that uh, came through during the demo that our moderators were answering. We have a quite a bit of time left here, so if there are any other questions, more than happy to take them up now. Okay, so we have a question here. Can a surcharge be added automatically for a credit card transaction? Very good question. The short answer is yes. There's more than one way to go on about this, but uh, one way I can think of right now is if you're familiar with price schedules in FuelPoint, that would be a very easy way to add a, a markup of X amount of percentage of the transaction total. Um, I have another question. Will payment information be saved by Stripe for future transactions or will customers need to enter the information each time? Again, great question. Um, the Stripe Card Vault does support secure storing of credit card and ACH details so that they can be used with the pay button in the future. 
Okay, another question. Um, how does the payment report to the ERP? Does it report as a credit? So the payment receipt is created from field point to your ERP and it gets applied to the invoice that was paid. So the payment method is pre-configured based on your ERP setup. Depending on how that's configured, the payment gets applied uh, in the ERP accordingly. Okay, another question. If we don't use the invoicing feature in FieldPoint, can we still collect payments? Um, yes, you are able to customize the payments so that you can have the payment button or the pay button rather at uh, either the work order screen or the quote screen or perhaps somewhere else in the system. Out of the box, the way it's built is that the pay button and the pay features are available at the invoice level, but it's technically possible to make those same features available in other parts of the system uh, by using some customizations. Another question, the comment made for no fees or no contracts, are you speaking to fuel point fees, but a stripe fees will still apply? Um, that's correct. There are no fuel point fees for using payments. There are transactional fees that are uh, charged and collected by Stripe. What is the minimum version of fuel point uh, required? So you need to be on fuel point version 11.78 or newer in order to have access to the Stripe payment features. Thanks again for attending. Hope you got great value from today's demo. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me directly or to our support team. Our website, fuelpoint.net, is also an excellent resource to get information on the Fuelpoint payment solution. Thanks again and have a fantastic rest of your day.